Aloha! This is Dr. Tiki, writing a prescription for tiki drinks, tattoos, and tech. What could be more fun? It's time for another Strange Love Live. This is Strange Love After Hours. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Good evening, and welcome to another edition of Strange Love Live. I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Behind the desk, we've got Dr. Normal, but no producer Morgan, as she's winging her way back to Portland from Baltimore. And this evening, we have a very special holiday edition of the show. It's iPad Eve! Woohoo! We've got James Keller. Hi, everybody. Hi, James. How are you? I'm great, Cami. How are you? Uh, suddenly, I'm very perky. I don't know what happened. <laughs> the camera turned on, and I got all excited. It's because it's iPad Eve. It's iPad Eve. And it I is. finally learned to say iPad and not choke on the word. I, I'm, I'm going through the same thing. <sighs> Took me a while. Me too. But I still secretly call it the slate. Yeah. That I call it favorite. the iTablet. Yeah. yeah. I. Mm, but, you know, we're on the show. We have to call it by its... We don't have to. We could call it something else. We could. But we probably shouldn't. Probably not. Okay. So <laughs> tomorrow, the iPad, the first iPad comes out, not the 3G version. It's true. It's true. Wi-Fi only. Wi-Fi only. Comes out tomorrow. What time What time do the stores open? The stores open at 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're here in Portland, as I understand it, and you're, um, you've got one reserved at Pioneer Place, the mall itself, from what I understand, opens at 8. Um, but I do believe there might be some, some crazies who are waiting outside the mall even prior to 8 o'clock. I wonder if there's anyone waiting outside right now. Um, I, I don't know. Raven? Raven, are you there? <laughs> Raven, are you at the mall? Raven, I bet Raven's at the mall. <laughs> no, no. Actually, I, I would be surprised. I know there's a couple people uh, in front of the Fifth Avenue store in Manhattan who mm -hmm. are there already, uh, but Portland's a little bit more laid back. We like to sleep a little more. It's true. Maybe. It's true. Yeah, I get up and enjoy our coffee and our voodoo donuts. It's true. It's going to be all about the coffee and voodoo tomorrow morning. Okay, so... Tell me, so you are part of Small Society. I am. So why don't you just give us the, the brief Small Society rundown so that anyone who's not familiar knows why we're talking to you about the iPad. Great. Okay, so Small Society, we are a uh, merry band of misfits who have dedicated ourselves to developing applications for the iPhone operating system, mm -hmm. which is the iPhone and now the iPad. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've worked with great clients such as Starbucks and Whole Foods and Zipcar, mm -hmm. and um, we are happy to announce that today we um, launched the WordPress app for iPad, um, and obviously most people don't have it in their hands yet because most people don't have iPads, but it is available on the App Store for download, mm -hmm. um, and if you're a true geek like, like me, you will have downloaded all of your applications, your iPad app, just so you can sync tomorrow. So um, so anyway, small society, uh, we build cool iPhone stuff, um, and iPad is our new love. So Your new little toy. It's true. It's true. When you guys got the news that the iPad was coming out, I assume, so I was over at Pi with the Pi guys watching the live blogging of the, the, of the announcement. I yes. assume you guys were doing something similar. It's true. Just a couple blocks away, we were all gathered around the uh, conference room table and we all had our various devices and we had one laptop hooked up to the TV so we had a nice big mm -hmm. uh, broad screen and we just watched the... the um, news coming over the airwaves, which was very fun. I mean, I've, I've spent years of my career prior not working um, in Apple-specific worlds, mm -hmm. so um, it used to be the kind of thing that when there was a keynote, you'd sort of have multiple tabs on your Safari open, and you'd hit reload, and then like switch something in front when your boss walked behind. Mm -hmm. It was 
really um, quite nice for me to just be able to sit there with everybody and geek out and be surrounded by people who were um, as excited as as I was. So, uh, was so was fun. it instant? You guys watching the uh, the iPad announcement, and they're like, okay, now we're developing for iPad too. That was pretty much it. We actually, you know, the rumors had been pretty hot and heavy yeah. uh, coming up to it, so we, we felt pretty confident that that's what the announcement was going to be. So we had actually done quite a bit of prep. Um, mm -hmm. So we made a game plan where essentially um, we were hoping, and in fact they did, they released uh, the SDK the day they made the announcement, which meant that our developers could actually Actually download the tool set mm -hmm. so immediately the first day uh, once that was available we downloaded the SDK so we could load all of our existing clients iPhone apps in the simulator mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that they ran well um, and then we divvied up our different clients uh, amongst the team and we all started writing recommendations about um, how the iPad announcement should affect their mobile app strategy mm -hmm. um, so so, you know, we do development, but we really pride ourselves on being a very strategic, process-driven, user experience-driven um, agency. And so we wanted to really come out and help our clients understand what the iPad means for them, mm -hmm. um, which was, was really important. And so immediately from day one, uh, we were experimenting with it, we were consulting on it, and uh, now we've been doing quite a bit of development on it as well. What's the main difference developing for the iPhone versus the uh, iPad? That's a great question. So there's... Um, so my world is user experience. Mm -hmm. uh, we obviously have, have developers, but I, I try to make an experience that's going to make sense for the device itself. Mm -hmm. And it became apparent to me very quickly um, that you know when we go in and talk to a client and say, hey, iPhone, here's what we need to do. We need to get a feature set that's going to make sense for A, a really, really small pixel area, mm -hmm. the iPhone isn't very big, and B, um, whatever you expect your users to be doing on the go, right? It's pocket yeah. computing. So are they standing on a street corner? Or are they riding a bus? Those sorts of things. So those are the two pieces that we focus on when working with clients mm -hmm. um, because they tend to come at it from more of a, you know, I've built a website before and, and the usage context is very different, you know, sitting at a desk. Yeah. So we always focused on those two things. On the iPad, those two things... Uh, they still well the the pixel doesn't the, but the, the on the go applies well, or it will yes and no it right? will apply so so it will apply and that you'll be sitting in Starbucks right mm -hmm. but the likelihood of standing on the street corner true with your iPad is is not probably the same I mean a zip car would be a, a a great um, case study. They're they're one of our, our long term clients, mm -hmm. and um, for the Zipcar is a really cool app. Thank you. Uh, I'm I'm quite fond of, of <laughs> both the app and the client. They're the great folks over there. But um, sort of the sweet spot of the iPhone app for Zipcar mm -hmm. is this key fob that you can use to honk, lock, and unlock a car. And mm -hmm. so it's a key fob, and it makes sense because it's a key fob at mm -hmm. this sort of form factor. But imagine that on an iPad. Imagine, like, pulling yeah. your iPad out of your bag and, you know, you have I a know some people. Well, there will be a few, <laughs> and I hope people take but pictures I, and post yeah, them on the internet. Yeah, I think they're going to be the minority, but yeah. <laughs> So, so there's there's some differences there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's somewhere it's a hybrid between iPhone in that it's a very similar it's an Apple product. There's a mm -hmm. visual vocabulary. Uh, the code base is, is is can be shared. In fact, mm -hmm. um, so so it's like an iPhone in that capacity. Um, it's like a website in in or in that. Um, the usage context is very similar, right? You're going to mm -hmm. be sitting sitting somewhere, uh, maybe not at a desk, maybe it is on your lap, but it it is sort of a bigger um, experience that's going to be immersive that you're probably going to be sitting while experiencing. What's the screen size? Um, <laughs> you want to see? I've got a prop. So because we're complete and total geeks mm -hmm. at Small Society, one of the first things uh, that we did and... Uh, Raven is my partner in crime at Small Society, and he built uh, these foam core Here. board iPads. Um, oh, there we go. 
This is much more realistic than the than the mock-up that I used on me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> We've and as you can see, it's you know nice and scratched up and mm -hmm. and abused because this comes with me everywhere. But mm -hmm. um, but so this is this is the size, and if you could imagine a big key fob, that mm -hmm. would make much sense, right? No. Um, so so it's it's big enough to be big, substantially bigger than the iPhone, but I was actually surprised the first time I saw this mock-up at how small it was, because it's not the same as a laptop. It's no. it's not in that same realm at all, um, yeah. which is, is was for me a surprise, but I, I'm really excited about the form factor, mm -hmm. um, because I think, you know, for us girls, it's perfect. Not that boys aren't going to love it, too, but... Um, you know, I've always felt like a bit of a turtle being a girl in tech, and I've got my laptop and my big backpack, and mm -hmm. it looks huge on me. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited that I can put this in a little case and throw it in, you know, one of my non-backpack bags, and, mm -hmm. and it's going to be light and comfortable. Yeah. So it's all about the accessories. So what, is this a new bag that you got just for? <laughs> it is, is it? actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this is a, a book bag, B-O-O-Q. Mm -hmm. um, it's called the Taipan Extra Small. Mm -hmm. um, and I like it because it's got all of these snappy pockets. Mm -hmm. um, and then the center part is oh, fuzzy. fuzzy and and. Uh, nice and squishy, yeah, so keep the screen them. nice and safe. Yeah, so yeah. so it is. It, for me, it's all about the accessories, and we're actually traveling uh, to LA next week to meet with a client, and I'm very excited about not taking a laptop with me for the first time in, in forever. So, yeah. so what do you think is going to be the most practical use of it, and then um, what will be the most fun use? Um, I don't know that I can separate those two things. So. For me, it is about the ease of portability. As mm -hmm. I said, I've always hated having my backpack on my back and mm -hmm. having a heavy computer. Even, you know, new light computers are a pain. They're still computers. They're still computers. Um, and so for me, I'm going to have my computer at work and I'm going to have my computer at home and my iPad will be everywhere else. So You're getting the keyboard? I am getting a keyboard. Um, you know, we were just talking before the show. I've, I'm not a very good iPhone typer. Oh, I yeah, never I'm a have thumb been. typer, and she's not. I'm, I'm a hunt and pecker. She told me that she never, um, she never turns it on its side to use it, and I was like, well, you have to turn it on its side to type with your thumb. So I, I, I think um, I was actually reading some some demographics about that, mm -hmm. and it's interesting. There's a large age uh, split about that. Mm -hmm. You know, the. The Gen Ys tend to be side typers, mm -hmm. and um, the older generations, which um, I don't know, I think we're about the same age, and we're kind of on the cusp. I think we are, yeah, we're, right we're, between the two. Yes, yeah. we, we don't have a home, um, but but the older generations tend to hold it vertical, and it's because you know people at the sidekick and, and whatnot got mm -hmm. used to text to thumb this typing. This was my first phone that I ever texted on or had. I mean, it was the first one I ever used in this way, but mm -hmm. it just seemed more. Yeah. Natural. My husband does it too. I just I've I tried and yeah. I'm not for me. Not for you. But on the iPad on the iPad I still hate saying it. Makes my mouth feel ugh. I know. I know. It's true. It's too close to iPod too, just it is. The, it's just but iPod doesn't bring the same issues for me. I, I'm with you. <laughs> I'm totally with you. I, I found it an odd choice. Okay. So on the iPad Yay, iPad. <laughs> Seriously, yay, iPad, but, uh, okay, so on the iPad, it'll be the same thing. It'll have the screen rotation. It'll have the screen rotation, in fact, um, all four ways, mm -hmm. and then any play, any time that you type, you actually have the ability to have the soft keyboard or a Bluetooth keyboard, mm -hmm. um, and for me, it's a, a no-brainer. Apple makes these incredibly cute little silver Bluetooth keyboards that aren't that much. I think they're a little bit longer mm -hmm. um, than this, but they're they're not quite as wide and super cute. Um, so I'll take that with me everywhere. I'll okay. just have my keyboard and my iPad, and and I'm also this is going to be the ultimate Sunday morning device. Yes. Like right now, I usually on Sunday mornings, I'll sit with my coffee and I'll have my laptop on my lap and I'll be reading the New York Times. So you make it out of bed. I lay there Sunday mornings in bed with my iPhone, <laughs> typing my thumb. 
tabs, <laughs> scrolling. I scroll with my thumb too. You scroll. I'm, I'm actually I'm really fascinated by different behaviors and and the way people hold. This is part of my job mm-hmm. that I'm a total geek for it. Um, there are a lot of strange usage habits about how people scroll, what fingers they use. Some people are thumb only. Some people use these two. You know, in Twitter, I don't use my thumb. In Twitter, I use my my middle finger and my pointer finger. Yep. There, there's different habits, yeah. and it's different. So I'm a lefty, mm-hmm. but I navigate and I type with my right, hmm. uh, which is very strange. Yeah. You know, most people, you know, will navigate and, and type with the hand with that the they write with. Hand. My daughter is a lefty, and she mouses and navigates with her right hand. Well, I do mouse with my right as well, which I think perhaps is, is the connection, which is the best skill in the world, mm-hmm. actually, because if you're a lefty, um, and you mouse right, you can actually research using your mouse and write with your left at the same time. Mm-hmm. It was great as a student. Mm, but remember, time saving. If only I could learn to mouse with my left hand, which I can't. <laughs> my left hand's kind of useless. You can do anything you want I can't. Do I just chaos. don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to. Let's face it. I can use the touchpad with my left hand, though. Touch. I don't know. When's the last time I used a mouse? I still use one at work. Yeah, I don't. On a desktop. Huh. The only time I ever use a mouse is when I'm doing Photoshop work. Yeah. The Magic Mouse is nice. Have you tried I Apple's haven't. Magic Mouse? I haven't tried the Magic Mouse. So I've hated all Apple mice mm-hmm. until the Magic Mouse. I'm, I'm a huge fan. Hmm. All right, I want to get back on track. I want to <laughs> find out which applications you've downloaded, and then that will bring us to talking about the WordPress app. Okay. Um, my goodness. I've downloaded over 50 iPad <laughs> apps. Um, I started the second... To be fair, she does this for a living, I, though, so... It's true. She, gets, she has an excuse. You don't. I, barely. It's, <laughs> it's almost inexcusable. Um, and 50? 50. I just wanted to make sure I heard right. Okay. Um, and they totally run the gamut, right? So um, I downloaded all of the Apple um, apps. So that's Keynote, uh, Pages, and Numbers, mm-hmm. uh, which are their productivity suite, the equivalent of Microsoft Office. Yeah. Um... Which is not available, was not available for iPhone. No. Because uh, no, it would be impossible. It would be impossible. Yeah. yeah. So, and it, so there's, I'm excited because it will allow me to be productive and go to meetings mm-hmm. and not have a laptop. Mm-hmm. Um, at the same time, um, as a user experience designer, that's the best place to see how Apple's doing it. Mm-hmm. I spent a lot of time um, over the last month or two studying all of the keynote videos so I could actually see the interactions. And they now have some more video posted on, on apple.com. Mm-hmm. But um, you know, downloading their apps is, is really important to see how Apple is, is, is using the device and what uh, user experiences they're creating. Um, because they know a heck of a lot, a lot more about it than any of the rest yeah. of us at this point. Um, I downloaded quite a few games. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a huge fan of Ng Mocha's We Rule. Mm-hmm. It was just announced for the iPhone a couple weeks back. I'm a total addict. Semaphoria. If you're out there on the Plus Network and download She, we made, Rule. Me, she, made, me, she made me download it when she got here. She was like, Cammy! I'm a We Rule pusher, man. I she shouldn't really, really yell at me, but she may have looked at me in a way that made me feel guilty that I had failed to download it last <laughs> week when I tried to. And and they have it now for the iPad, which I'm really excited about. Is it different wait. for the iPad? It's just bigger. Okay. So right now you've got a kingdom and you kind of have to scroll around your kingdom, mm-hmm. whereas on the iPad you'll just have your kingdom. Be open to you. You can do whatever you want to in your kingdom. So you've got the office suite. You've got games. Games. I've got a few um, applications for my kid. Mm -hmm. They've got a couple of of books, read-along books, Mm -hmm. which I'm just really curious about the experience. I think Mm -hmm. um, uh, the kid bot will love it. Mm -hmm. Um, And then there are a bunch of other apps that I just am fascinated by how media is going to be um, using the iPad. So... The New York Times app, Wall Street Journal, USA Today. I'm not a huge fan of their content, but their iPhone app was actually really beautifully created, mm-hmm. and so um, I'm curious to see what they've done on the iPad. Um, and then there's a couple of magazines. GQ is going to be out on day one. Mm-hmm. Um, Time Magazine, so I've downloaded those as well. Um, and then there's some fun apps, right? There's a weather app, and that'll be great. There, you know, There's a bunch of little silly things that are just fun to see what people are doing. So what is standard? Like when you get your iPhone, there's like almost an entire page of, of apps that are standard loaded. 
Yep. What's standard on the iPod, Pat? I see. Too mm, close. It's too close. Don't want to say it. It's iPad. just like one little bar separating the two. Um, so I believe actually that these are, are right. So you've got Safari, mm -hmm. which you know the browser, yeah. Mail, mm -hmm. um, Photos, and iPod. So you can do video and music both. Mm -hmm. But there is no camera. There is no camera. Okay. Which um, I was really disappointed by when they had the announcement and there was no camera. I was like, yes. So this is this is a huge a huge issue for some people, and I'm not. You know, having this camera is one of those things I'm not really comfortable with, and I would never see myself doing video chat. I, I've never done it. Does you, do you have family that lives far away? I do, but we talk on the phone and we text, and yeah. occasionally we'll get the kids together to, mm -hmm. to do a video chat, but um, I hate video chat. I really don't like seeing it. So, so it didn't bug me personally, and mm -hmm. if I'm going to need to take a picture of something, I've got... I've well, yeah, I don't iPhone. think I'd use it to take pictures. Of, I mean, I, actually, yeah. that's not true because sometimes at a conference I will take my MacBook and turn it around and take photos with the photo booth <laughs> function, but that's just me. I'm a little quirky that way. That's okay. I, I like the photo booth function. The photo booth, it's a great app. They did a brilliant job. So, And the rumor is that the version 2 iPad will, will likely have, have the camera. Um, so I would probably stay tuned for that. Okay. Um, waiting, waiting. It's mm -hmm. true. Okay, so what else do we have? We've got... So then we have the, the sort of standard productivity things. We've got calendar, mm -hmm. which looks lovely, by the way. Mm -hmm. um, now I can see that being incredibly functional for me because it's difficult. I use my calendar obsessively on my iPhone, but it's very hard to use because of the size. Yeah, and, and for what it's worth, I've never really liked the calendar app on um, OS X either. I kind of find it ugly and clunky. Mm -hmm. It looks beautiful on the iPad, so nice. I'm kind of excited that maybe Apple finally got that experience right for me. Kind of nice. Up. Please, Apple. Please. Be nice to James. Please. And then you've got contacts and notes, mm -hmm. maps, which um, rumor has it are absolutely gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, videos, YouTube, um, iTunes, and App Store, so you can buy more stuff. Mm -hmm. Very important. And then settings. Now, there was some, um, I don't know if it was speculation or announcement, uh, about uh, television shows being released for free for the iPad. So it's interesting. Um, there's nothing been announced in terms of the iTunes store. Mm -hmm. um, but what has happened is ABC mm -hmm. um, has a free app. Um, they're delivering their videos up, I believe, um, through HTML5, so mm -hmm. a, an iPad consumable format. Mm -hmm. um, so you will be able to watch, I think, Lost and I know Castle. I know that was a Castle. big one for I me. Love Castle. I think Modern Family is that because that's not. I don't NBC. know what that is. Um, it's funny. <laughs> okay. Totally recommend it. Um, so ABC has a, um, one of the top apps in the store right now. Mm -hmm. um, we'll see how long that stays. But so you will be able to, to consume quite a bit of TV content that way. And then there's ABC, NBC, and what, CBS. Mm -hmm. CBS is has made their site, as I understand it, all of their um, TV content on their site. HTML5, HTML5. versus Flash. So nice. it won't be through a native app, but you'll be able to watch it on the web through the browser. And NBC is the straggler, which is, you know, obviously the Hulu um, component. Yeah. There's been rumors forever about Hulu. There's been renewed rumors this week um, about a, an impending app, but we don't know. Because Hulu is Flash-based. It is. It is. Um, mm -hmm. So Sad. I hope they build a native app. I'm a, I'm a fan of native. Native. Hulu's not Silverlight. Netflix is Silverlight. Oh. Sorry, Doctor Normal doesn't Actually, consume as much Hulu streaming. Actually, Hulu does have. Well, they have a desktop app that is that may or may not be Silverlight. Yeah. Um. I, don't, I yeah I haven't downloaded it because it's so easy to use it on the laptop. Yep. That it's just I don't actually watch TV on the television. Yeah, you know, it's funny. There's a couple shows that, that, that I'll watch on the TV, but mm -hmm. I'm I'm mostly Hulu right now. Yeah. That's one use of the iPad I'm really excited about. Yeah. So right now, when I get on my treadmill, I literally perch my my MacBook <laughs> on top of the, you know, and um, I'm terrified every time I do it that it's going to fall to a, a horrible death. And mm -hmm. I think um, I can just put my iPad and there's a, like a little stand. Mm -hmm. And so I won't have to, you know, 
put my MacBook's life on the line when I Every work out time. now. Every time you want to be healthy. It's true. Poor little MacBook. It's true. And I can't get on a treadmill without TV, so it's no. something to distract from. Yeah. The, Maybe yeah. if I had a treadmill with the television, I would use that. I don't think so, though, because I could sit and watch it instead. <laughs> um, so that brings us back to more apps, though. More apps. And also Portland, because Small Society is a Portland company. It's true. And we love Portland. We do. And Portland loves its mobile. Is this still mobile development? I, Yes. Okay. Definitely. Um, with Without a doubt, because while, yes, you will use this in your home quite mm-hmm. a bit, I mean, it is something that you can just tuck in your bag and take with you everywhere. Okay. Um, so we're still calling it mobile development. Portland loves its mobile development. Yep. And, and oh, yeah. I mean, it's a hothead. I mean, mm-hmm. I, you were at Pi, so you had mm-hmm. the Urban Airship guys. Mm-hmm. I don't know if the Gorlocks were in Pi yet at that point. I don't think that they were. And if they were, they weren't there that day because I didn't meet them. But um, great group of guys mm-hmm. uh, just released an iPhone app called Kickball. Kickball. Which is Foursquare. It's super um, fun. Rethought a little mm-hmm. bit. It's really great. Immersely. And they just updated it. Like today, I just downloaded the update, and it's it's running a lot more smoothly. It's very nice. They're they're great guys. Uh, Ex wide night. So mm-hmm. prior coworkers of mine, wonderful, mm-hmm. smart, brilliant people. I would keep an eye on them. They're doing some really cool stuff. I don't have the camera. I did the funny thing with the eyes. Nice. <gasps> oh, there, there you go. Um, <laughs> but Portland also loves blogging. It's true. Oh, boy, do we love blogging. It's true. And we love WordPress. We do love WordPress. Oh, we, we love, love WordPress. We love open source and we love WordPress. Love, oh my gosh. And wait, we've got WordPress and blogging and open source and mobile development. And what did you guys do? We launched WordPress. Um, this is a, it was a crazy project. Mm-hmm. Um, it, so usually we, we have a fairly long engagement with our clients where we do a really robust discovery and mm-hmm. we gather requirements and we do user analysis and and do a lot of homework up front to create this amazing app. Mm-hmm. Um, and on, I think it was February 26th, so it was about a month after the iPad announcement, mm-hmm. uh, we got a call. Um, from WordPress. We were very excited and we went down to San Francisco and uh, met with uh, Matt Mullenweg and uh, Renan um, and we kicked off the project and essentially we had four weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, We had two full-time devs dedicated to it but both of them had to break up some of that sprint time because they were both scheduled to go to South by Southwest and you know, you can't take you, that away you can't from, take that from, away from someone. someone. <laughs> um, so we had an incredibly short period of time. Uh, we had a dream opportunity, mm-hmm. and uh, we just got cracking on it. Um, luckily, there was a WordPress iPhone app that was pretty great, mm-hmm. and so we had an existing code base that we worked with um, to sort of... You know, because it's all the same language, we got to use the same components, and we built a universal app. So the code that actually works on the iPhone is the exact same code that works on the iPad. Mm -hmm. Um, So you just have to download one app, and you will get it on both devices. Um, But the iPad version is laid out very differently, which sort of optimizes the experience for inputting text, which is, you know, sort of a, a big left turn from from the iPhone where most people weren't creating blog posts yeah. as much. So you can I mean you can to be fair you can log in to WordPress on on the website on Safari. Oh, yeah. But it's a pain in the ass. It really and truly is because I've tried to do it before, which is why I do not blog from my iPhone. Because I send long emails from my iPhone. I tweet from my iPhone. <laughs> I will type on my iPhone. I don't mind. But Blogging into the website. It was anything more than approving a comment is too difficult. Yep. So what does the app do? So you can do blog creation, editing, and and publishing. Mm-hmm. Um, you can do comment approval, editing. You can do all the comment moderation things, and you can also edit pages. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's an absolutely beautiful preview function built in. Nice. Um, which is absolutely lovely. I mean, you just get this. You actually get to see what you're creating as you're doing it. Mm-hmm. Um, you can integrate media. You can integrate, you know, your photos if you have them saved to your device. So mm-hmm. it's 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 not a lot of bells and whistles, mm-hmm. uh, but it's all of the basic stuff that you want to be there, mm-hmm. um, and it just does it, and it does it in a beautiful sort of Apple-y iPad sort of way. So we're very very excited, and the folks at WordPress were 
incredible to work with. Um, you know, it's a big change for us. Usually we work with marketing departments and IT departments and everyone's, you know, very corporate. Um, and it's a very different thing working with an open source group where, mm -hmm. you know, rather than having, you know, status calls, we just, you know, updated an internal blog where different members from all over the world, all, all throughout the WordPress community would contribute and, you know, download the app and test. Um, it, was, it was great, great fun. Uh, and we're... We're very lucky to have, have been able to go on that journey with them. So that was very exciting. You sent a tweet out yesterday. Uh, no, you sent a tweet out yesterday, and then you sent me a DM that said I might be able to talk about the thing, and I was just like, "What thing? Oh my god! I'm really excited. What was it?" And then it's the second I saw, I was like, "Oh, yeah." Originally, beep, originally beep. Apple had asked that developers have a, an embargo on on discussing their iPad apps until. I believe 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, which is when the iPad went live. That's ridiculous. You know, goes live. And yeah, and so it was crazy. But then they, you know, the app started appearing in the iTunes Store, and Apple rolled back, you know, their time period to mm -hmm. today. And so I'm very thankful because I was, I was a little worried that we wouldn't have anything fun to talk about. And there are thousands, literally thousands. thousands. I, I think. Raven yesterday said 2,800, but I'm not positive, so don't mm -hmm. quote me on that. But thousands of applications already, and it's not released until tomorrow. Yeah, no, it's great. I, I, I mean, I've, I've literally spent the last two days obsessively, compulsively checking the the iTunes store for what's new and, mm -hmm. and what's selling and, and what looks interesting. Um, we actually do have another client whose who's app has launched as well. Mm -hmm. um, it's not quite as sexy as WordPress, they, but I love Nothing's their... Nothing's as sexy as WordPress, yeah, let's be true. fair. WordPress is kind of sexy. It, it is really sexy. Yeah. But um, these guys are great. They're called Unity Media, and they're I love what they do conceptually. Mm -hmm. and we essentially built, built them a demo app. Um, they're going to be um, placing iPads in a hospital setting to educate people. Nice. So say you were to, you know, um, take your kid in to, to get their tonsils removed. Mm -hmm. You know, as you're waiting in the waiting room, you'd be given an iPad and you could, you know, watch a video about the surgery, read information on, you know, post-op care, pre-op care, all of that stuff just sort of packaged in a really nice, easy format. And I don't know if you've been in a hospital late, lately when you just, there's stacks of paper and the nurse yeah. throws a bunch of stuff at you and it's very overwhelming. It's just a really elegant solution. That is an, not just for um, for patients and for the families of patients, but that's an amazing solution for medical care as well. I mean, the the form of that is fantastic. My doctor's sure. office, he he's more modernized than any doctor I've known because everything everything's computerized. You go, you, in a, the, you no, we don't have the charts at his office. He takes care of everything on the computer, which is fantastic but it's still a computer in every room this would be an amazing solution for that yeah and as for you know for students as well this is the the thing when I pictured my my kid going to college I was like there's no way she's gonna be lugging around a backpack full of books she's not there's it, no way it comes back to that whole backpack thing I mean, it does think about that I mean whenever you know on campus because the hip thing would be to have you know one strap right mm -hmm. I don't know about you but I always felt like my right arm was gonna disconnect mm -hmm. because I had you know eight million books and a laptop mm -hmm. and it was just and back then big laptop right mm -hmm. and so I think you know this is going to revolutionize you know the way students interact with the world because you can I mean the Kindle was a nice I mean that was the, everyone was like oh the Kindle now all the college textbooks fantastic no didn't really go I, I don't think it was widespread enough, but but Apple products are used in education exclusively in Oregon. I know it, it's only Mac. The, yeah. That's the only thing the kids are taught in Oregon, um, and I think that's a pretty widespread phenomenon for our country. Apple has been really aggressive for for years about placing their technology in educational settings, yeah. and uh, for good reason. I think if you get them young and you learn to compute on a Mac, you know then moving to, to the PC world is, is a lot harder. Um, and I think, I mean, Our daughter artist. lives in both worlds. Sad. <laughs> um, George Fox University actually recently announced that um, incoming freshmen are going to have the option of being given an iPad. And like, what a great thing. There's yeah. a couple of universities now. And um, I really think it's a, a huge 
it's a huge game changer. I mean, think of, because of the price point of the iPad, that's not really that much money to throw on the, when you're when you're paying for college anyway. Yep. That's really, I mean, it's it's nothing. <laughs> it's insignificant. Well, I, I think about the the low end uh, the low end price is probably not too far off of what I would pay. Uh, a semester in books. Mm -hmm. I double majored in English and history, so maybe that's a little unfair. I probably had twice as many books as should have been. But legal, still, books but books are expensive, and, and expensive. unless you're buying them used, and you can't always find them used. Yep. Um, but so the well, the low end price is four ninety nine, four ninety nine, which is about what the iPhone cost when it first came out. I think so. I think so. Um. <laughs> <laughs> which is not what I pay. I waited. I, Ridiculous. Did, I was actually on Verizon, and at first I was just an iPod Touch girl, mm -hmm. um, and then then finally made the leap to AT and T. But um, yeah, no, I, it's it's a reasonable price point. Um, yeah, it is. And I was I was surprised. I was so pleasantly surprised. Yeah. I, I I was not expecting that, um, and I think that price point will. Um, give it the opportunity to really truly be a game changer yeah. right i think it's accessible enough that you know families that might not be able to consider a, a laptop mm -hmm. um might be able to think about this as a as a, a computing device yeah. um apart from from having a traditional computer in the house so when um, do you think the price is going to come down because they always do they always drop I don't know. I really don't know. So I've, there are... I mean, obviously the second round, it's still going to, I mean, they're not going to drop the price before then. Yeah. Well, I think the iPhone came down, actually. Well, though, I mean, the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, the, they'll wait for the 3G to come out. Yeah. Um, but truth be told, um, someone did a components analysis, and mm -hmm. um, the hardware value alone was... I think mid 200s, maybe closer to 300. Mm -hmm. And the beauty of, of Apple devices, while well, yes, the hardware is gorgeous, really comes in in the software. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I don't know if it'll come down or not. Hmm. I, I think it was priced to sell to begin with. Yeah. But I would love to be proven wrong in that. If it comes down, that's nothing but more awesome for for all of us consumers and I guess my business as well. The more people who have these devices, the more I get to you know, designed for the iPad, which is fun. So what are some of your favorite apps that you've worked on that you can talk about to date for Small Society? Because the first time we had you on the show, you guys had a bunch of secrets. It was it was so early. There were so many secrets, so many things you couldn't tell. So now yeah. tell us some of the stuff that was most fun. So I've mentioned Zipcar a couple times. Mm -hmm. They are one of my favorite clients of all time. I actually did some web work with them um, a few years prior to Small Society, so I already um, knew the team. I knew the business pretty well, but I love Zipcar because um, it's a great business model, right? Mm -hmm. They are providing people, uh, they fit a need, it's good for the earth, they really care, it's about community, it's a green brand, it's a fun brand. Um, and they believe in what they're doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I just, I love them. And, and the app is a great way for us to innovate. Um, so the fact that you could lock and unlock, it was great that all all of the fleet of zip cars already had an AT&T receiver in them mm -hmm. because that's how they did remote locking and unlocking from the home office. Mm -hmm. So they already had the in-car capability to, to make the iPhone app possible. So working with them was, was fun because I was familiar with them and there was the opportunity to innovate. But it was also um, a glorious opportunity in that Apple really likes innovation and so we were able to be on stage at last year's Worldwide Developer Conference, which Very was nice. sort of, it was a huge, huge thing for us to be able to do that, um, which we got to bring, you know, a mini into the floor of Moscone and do on-site demos, which was really fun. Um, and it was also in an Apple TV commercial, which is uh, was um, really cool to see. Um, so they're a favorite. The, the great, great folks, a great app. We had a ton of fun. Um, Another one that I really like, we don't talk about um, them as much, but we did the app for Jive, Jive Software. Mm -hmm. um, so again, local Portland. So what does Jive's app do? Jive's app is the mobile version of their social business software, mm -hmm. Tudato. So it is all about uh, enterprise collaboration and communication. Okay. Um, so there's everything from 
you know, a Twitter-like status update to document sharing, um, posting threads, that sort of thing. I mean, there's just, it's a great way for people to communicate, and the on-the-go sort of paradigm is so important to them. I mean, you always have a certain, you know, number of your workers in any corporation who tend to work from the home, the home office, but then you have, you know, your sales and marketing folk, and mm-hmm. they're on the go, they're on airplanes and whatnot. So it really just made a lot of sense. Um to provide them with a mobile tool. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we were really lucky to to work with them, and it was really fun to work with a local client, um, you know, where we could just sort of meander over to their office and and sit down and and talk. So, um, and I'm also a sucker sucker for business software. Mm -hmm. And I know it's not quite as sexy, but um, I think it's really useful, right? I, I know that people use that software all the time, and that makes me feel really good about it. So I think those are some of my favorites. Mm -hmm. Can you one more? Um, The one that you're probably looking for probably is the one that I should talk least about. I'm not looking for one at all, actually. Oh, okay. I'm not. There, I'm just there, okay. wondering. There, there, there's, a, there's a big one that, that, that um, w- we don't get to talk about very often, so... Um, let me think about so another Whatever that one is. We'll just gloss over it now. See now that you say that, I know which one it is. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm like, hmm, 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 interesting. Hmm, yes, very no, interesting. They, they're very fun. Um, but no, we, you know, we also got to do some work with Air New Zealand through a local agency called um, PMSI, and we're doing a series of travel apps uh, mm-hmm. with them. So um, if you're going to London anytime soon, there's a great little iPhone app called uh, Spot On. Mm-hmm. Um, and essentially what you do is it gives you all of the insider tips about great places to go. You can highlight, you can choose all of those places. Um, and it's a great little just sort of prep guide and, you know, walk with you as you go in London. Um, and we're rolling out a series of those, nice. uh, which has been really, really fun. Very cool. Um, and again, Air New Zealand, you know, we don't we don't think of them as one of the big airlines here here in the U.S., but um, especially not here in Portland, but they've got a larger presence, uh, especially down at LAX, and they're a great airline, very well known for just being sort of fun, laid back, great customer service, um, very people-minded, which in the airline industry is is uh, nice to have. Very nice to have. So um, it's been it's been a ton of fun. So h- tell me how small to say because. Small society is a really big win for Portland. I mean, it is because it's something that you guys started and and suddenly, oh my gosh, how effective are you and how successful are you guys? And you guys are hiring. Well, I don't know if you're you high you have hired recently. We have filled out your team. I know that's what I was getting to Sam. (laughs) Did you see me working up to Sam? Hi, Sam. Congratulations. We love Sam. Sam is a great addition to the team. Uh, we also recently added Mike. Uh, so we are we are growing slowly. We're trying to do the moderate growth thing. Mm-hmm. Um, stay true to our name. We don't want to be mid-sized society. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's so. F- First off, I mean, Portland, why would you be anywhere else, right? Exactly. We, Hello. You know, there are lots of great. Great cities all over all over the U.S. But none of them are Portland. But none of them are <laughs> Portland. And you know, for for Raven and myself and and Heather and a lot of the rest of the team, um, being anywhere else just doesn't make sense. And yeah. so um, we love it here. And you know, being here, we can hop down to L.A. for a day or two, or go down to San Francisco for mm-hmm. a day or two, and and it's fine. And those are our nice, easy little jumps to make. Yeah. Um, East Coast clients are a little bit harder because, you know, but um, we love Portland and we love the mobile community here. Um, you know, Mobile Portland meets uh, once a month. I actually missed the last one. It was at Urban Airship and uh, um, or at Pi and they were talking about the new Urban Airship air mail service. So, Which is um, sweet. Super sweet. Urban Airship is doing amazing stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's just a hub. There's so many great shops in town, and it's a community. And, um, yeah, I, I'm worried, you know, sooner or later we're going to dry up the well of cocoa devs in town because there are so <laughs> many of us. So, you know, parents, teacher, children, cocoa, they can make a great living writing code. And uh, 
they're, they're going to be in continuing high demand. So. Especially here. Yes. Especially in Portland, or we have to start bringing people in from other cities, and then we'll get crowded, and they'll complain about the rain, and this is not something that we want. It's true. It's not. It's true. So, we're done with small society now. <laughs> now we can talk about James. Uh-oh. How are you, James? I'm good, Cammie. How's your knitting going? <laughs> Um, the business is going better than my knitting, <laughs> I have to say. Um, sometimes in life you have to, to choose, and, and uh, the, the last year or so has definitely been focused on, on the business, which is great. Yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I can't complain. We, we have a great little thriving business and, a, and an economy that's a little shaky. But the yarn so. is suffering. The yarn is suffering. Well, no, it's just accumulating. So the problem oh. that I have is... I, I see the yarn and I feel the yarn and mm-hmm. then it just piles up in my you closet. Say, I need to have your yarn and you take it home I with you. I take it home and I take it out and I pet it um, and then I put it back in its little case. And, mm-hmm. and, um, Do you have yarn cases? So I'll tell you my, my dirty secret <laughs> yes, story. Tell me. tell me, please. So very <laughs> early in my, my knitting career, I discovered a site called eBay. You may have heard of it. I may have heard of eBay once or twice, maybe. Um, and so Read something somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I discovered that if you um, searched on eBay for slight variations of misspellings mm-hmm. of popular things, you can get... Um, auctions that aren't bid on very highly because of the misspelling. Mm -hmm. And with yarn, oftentimes like fancy European yarn, there would be plenty of misspellings. So Mm -hmm. I found out that you could get bags and bags of beautiful yarn really, really cheap because of people who can't spell. Mm -hmm. Um, So I started collecting a lot of this yarn Mm -hmm. and um, I have this beautiful wooden chest that pretty much hadn't had anything in it. And I just kept putting the yarn in. And then one day my husband came into my office and and he asked me about the chest for some reason, and I, w- I looked at him, and I, my husband's name is Jamie. I was like, Jamie, I have a secret to tell you. <laughs> and I'm not good at keeping secrets. I'm not a very good liar at all. So um, his face just fell. He was like, what? What? What, what <laughs> haven't you been telling me? And I opened the chest, and it was full of yarn, and he had a hearty laugh about it. And I still have that yarn today. <laughs> I still have my husband who didn't leave me because of my he yarn He didn't leave secrets, you because so. of the chest full of yarn. Yeah. Yeah, so. There are worse secrets to have. It's true. Than a giant chest. I, I, live a, I live a pretty dull life, though. <laughs> yarn, is, yarn, yarn is my deep secret. Yarn is your deep, deep secret. True. You have other deep secrets. Well, since last time we talked to you. I think I don't know if Doctor was laughing at me or at something on the. Um, you you did ignite and you had a, a, a very interesting <laughs> ignite presentation. What was it called? It was. I, I remember the keyword. I'm trying to remember. Um, was it was it my secret life as a hooker? My, I put, uh, something like that. Some, something about that. Yeah. Yes. Something so, about being a hooker. Well, so <laughs> it was a riff on. Um, I believe it was ignite two when mm-hmm. there was the. A story of my life as an undercover hooker, mm-hmm. um, where I, I don't actually remember her name, but she gave a great talk about, you know, learning from the NYPD about how to go undercover as a hooker, and and so it's a great buzzword, and you know, buzz gets you everywhere in mm-hmm. the ignite titles. Yes, it does. Um, and so I thought I would share my own personal hooker story. Um, so I spent four years in college as. Um, a hooker on my women's rugby team and uh, the hooker is the position in the middle of the scrum which is sort of that you know tangle of people that push back and forth and you, you're I'm not a very big person um, she's tiny I, I'm she's she's tiny I'm extra I'm four extra inches tall today um, how tall are you without the heels I'm five foot yeah yeah. 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 I'm actually taller than James and I, if you don't know me, I'm very short. And if you do know me and you don't think I'm short, it's because you see me wearing 5-inch heels. And there's a reason that we do that. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, so there's one position in rugby that you need to be small because you you have big girls around you and they mm-hmm. lift you up and you're called a hooker because someone rolls the ball into the middle of the scrum and you hook mm-hmm. the ball back with your heel and you have mm-hmm. to be short enough that the people that, that you know on either side of you called the props can prop you up mm-hmm. and you can hook those. So there's one position for a small person mm-hmm. on, on the rugby field. And that was you. And that was me. For four years. For four years. I loved it. I loved it. I really feel that more girls should do all contact full contact sports Mm -hmm. um 
I, it was something I was actually good at because most girls are afraid of it. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a big brother, so I, I wrestled a, a lot as mm-hmm. a kid, and I was always kind of rough and tumble, but um, it was a ton of fun. Rugby's a great, great sport. So, so contact sports in Portland. You must like derby then. Have you I been to a derby bout? I've never been to a derby. You should go to a derby bout. I know I you should. would like it. I would it's love it. a lot it. of fun. I, I'm almost worried, though, that if I were to go, I wouldn't be able to to not, although I'm a mess on, on skates. So. <laughs> Are you? Uh, oh, yeah. yeah. It's not pretty. I really wish that I could do <laughs> derby. I couldn't. I would break myself into a million pieces or someone else. I'm not sure which. Yeah. One or the other. Someone would lose an eye. It would well, be bad. That was kind of the fun. Actually, it was so when I played rugby, the the kind of funny, kind of sad part is so my husband is um, he's a he's a pretty big guy and he's mm-hmm. very gruff looking, you know, very you know shaved head, just sort of. Uh, and next to me, especially being as tiny as I am, he looks really big. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I played rugby, I used to, because I was so small, I, I'd get sort of pushed towards the bottom of the pile mm-hmm. as you know people started to pile up. And so I would get a lot of knees and elbows in the mm-hmm. face. And so I got, about, I got a black eye about every semester. Nice. And um, so we'd go out for, like, you know, Sunday morning brunch to IHOP, and I'd be with this, you know, large, bearded, <laughs> gruff man, and he'd be next to, you know, a little blonde, short, you know, girl wearing jeans and a t-shirt, and the old ladies would just, like, stare and glare at him, and, but, you know, for a while he would refuse to go out and public with me. <laughs> the black guy. Yep. No! Yeah. Can't do it. I actually broke this bone once. Ow. Um, and so, yeah, it was, a, it was, you know, it was a good one. Ow. Ouch. Yeah. I, w- I wore a lot of rugby t-shirts to sort so of that explain it away. I think that should be important because there used to be this girl that I would go into a coffee shop and every time I'd see her, she'd look really, really beat up and like... It, it's very con- it's, it makes it's, you concerned. It's concerning. I, I found she's yeah. a boxer, so I was like, okay, that explains why you've got like the cut lip and this swollen eye. All right, you're a boxer. That's cool. And I a, can live with that. Yeah. That's that's awesome. Good for you. But there's a lot of social stigma around yeah. it because you know I'd have you know big marks and mm-hmm. yeah, and and people. Do you, do you, Sarah, I had a couple of professors come up to me and, do you need to tell me something? Oh. I play rugby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I need to tell you that I like full contact sports. It's true. All it's right. True. But it just goes to show that when James does something, she's all in. She does it the entire way, whether it's storing yarn in a giant <laughs> chest or doing mobile development or playing rugby or saying goodnight because... We've got to hit the end of the show. James has got to get up very early in the morning to go stand in line in rainy Portland weather and wait for her iPad. And I hope to see everyone there. I'm not going to be there. You know where I'm going to be at 7.30? Sleeping. Rolled up in my bed. I'm, I'm, comfy. I'm a little bit jealous. I won't, have, I won't have any Voodoo Donuts, though, to be fair. You will have a Voodoo Donut. And my dirty secret is this will be my first standing in line for an Apple product. So it's a bit of a a, a rite of passage, it as is. it were. So. It's not one I'm interested in, <laughs> in uh, experiencing, but <laughs> it is an important <laughs> rite of passage. Yeah, I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. And happy iPad Eve, everybody. Happy iPad Eve. It's almost. We've got an hour and a few minutes until iPad Day. So happy iPad Eve. I hope that you're all finding some special way to celebrate. We have tiki drinks. Tiki drinks. Yay. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, James. Thanks, Cammie. Next Thanks week, we'll have uh, Sabrina Miller from PDX FM on. <laughs>